go, but in Africa, I'll tell them, you know, mostly going to communicate by email. If I get a chance, I'll try to call for a little bit. And, you know, it's always tough to work around the major time changes. And then, you know, I haven't had a major international deployment since I've been married, so I don't know how that would, how things would work, but, you know, I know my wife and I would be um, fine to work out whatever comes up until, because she knows the nature of my job. Right. Okay. Well, those are, those are great, uh, those are all great things. Um, so you already mentioned the, the uniform uh, nuances. Uh, for what you do, do you take, what equipment do you take or supplies? Um, I mean, do you have a, since you are, do a lot of emergency responses, do you have a go bag packed and what, I guess what's kind of your, there's various packing lists out there and things like that, but what, what's your secret? I actually do not have a go bag. I, I just keep a list in my head and it usually works pretty well. Um, so, you know, the big thing for international deployments, you know, having the right power converters, um, taking enough, for me, contact solution or contacts uh, for, you know, so many days because I prefer to wear those over my glasses, you know, those kind of, you know, the personal care items. Uh, in Kenya, I bought a lot because I was able to there, and so I didn't really take many with me, but I, you know, I was going to be there 35 days, so I took some basics to get me started, and I knew I could buy, like, soap and shampoo uh, at the store near us, so I didn't take a ton. The one thing I always do is I take enough cliff bars uh, for one a day because that ends up being your lunch when you're out in the field. You don't have time to eat anything and you definitely don't want to eat the local street food because you'll put yourself at further risk. So that's another thing is you know, some people have theirs. That's my go-to. I know some people like jerky, but I need something a little more substantial. Mm-hmm. And clothing-wise, I always wear because uh, ten. You know, every time I've gone somewhere, it's always hotter there than here, um, and which is hard to do because it's Atlanta. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's just being time of year, so I always wear like kind of rough khakis, like not tactical khakis, but like the brand Cool K U H L mountain khakis, and I wear those and uh, some sort of wicking shirt. Uh, when I'm out in the field just because it gets so hot. And I take long, a couple long sleeve looking shirts if we're in an area that's hot, like a lot of mosquitoes. And then for the other things, we get a, a travel kit from CDC or travel clinic. So we'll get all the essential, um, medic, you know, kind of medications like Benadryl and aspirin and uh, Malaron for malaria and um, so there's a whole slew of things. Plus, we get EOC gives us some really good uh, mosquito repellent. So we kind of get packed with everything we need from them. And then for Nigeria, I took a whole supply of PPE because I didn't know this was early in the response before we actually knew what was happening and what we'd be getting into. So I had mm-hmm. a full, I had a one separate extra suitcase just of PPE. Because I actually don't fit for an N95, so to take a whole stash of N100s and they're a lot larger. Okay. So, so it's just kind of, you know, it, it depends on the deployment, but taking all that and then taking a, a field laptop from CDC, you, know, you never take your own on a deployment like that. You know, I will take my iPad and um, my iPod and you know, stuff like that. Okay. Oh, those are, that's all great information. Um, <clears throat> with all that, what do you consider the big? I mean, you already mentioned some of this, but what what are the biggest challenges for a foreign foreign trip? I think it's the challenge of balancing between taking enough. One of the things is taking enough stuff with you, and but not taking too much. Um, that's one of the things. Just like in prep, you know, kind of preparing for it. And the other ones, when you're in the field, just keeping yourself safe and healthy. And I think that's the, one of the bottom lines. Uh, you know, I don't find the work that challenging. I mean, I do, because um, I think that's the other part of it, is the mental health part is you will see things that you 
would never see in the U.S. And I think it's preparing yourself that way so you don't, for some reason, get PTSD or any anxiety or anything like that. You know, especially on the Ebola, it was kind of tough, you know, seeing what we did. Um, you know, it can be challenging. And then Kenya, working in these villages with a very, very low resource, you know, you see things you don't really want to see. I think it's just, you know, that's the other thing is keeping your keeping yourself mentally healthy as well. That's a, that's a great answer. Which leads us into which which of your twenty seven deployments was the most challenging? Um. I would probably say that the Nigeria Ebola one ended up being the most challenging. The first Kenyan trip was challenging because it was long. Um, Ebola one, I think part of it was how how was, long was the how long was the Kenya one? The first one was thirty five days, thirty four days. Okay, the one that, that I was... got hazard duty and foreign duty for. So, um, and then the Nigeria Ebola deployment was. I think I was out, I forget, 17 days roughly. Um, cause I had a consul, I had to get back for some family issues and then also some other work stuff. And that one was most challenging because we were going into a, an unknown situation. You know, it was actually because of the security risks in Nigeria and the high population in Lagos, you know, we were concerned if the Ebola outbreak got a little out of control there, it could have been become a very dangerous situation because we were in Nigeria is the Boko Haram um terrorist group. And, you know, they were they're in Abuja, so they're actually not in Lagos, but you know, you you know, we're not able to kind of track that, you know, when we're there, but you know, if other people kind of keep an eye on those things. So I think it's the just you know, not knowing what we're doing. Also it was very quick to get out in the field. I got a call on a Sunday you know, night. I was interested. We might be gearing up to go. The trip was kind of up in the air Monday, and then we were out the door. Okay. So it was a very quick thing to make, you know, to get everything going, taking things down. And we, Nigeria, you need a visa before you get there. But in this case, they made special exceptions. So we actually had to go through Abuja to get the. Um, Visa on site, which has never happened before, so a lot of concern with that. And then just being there, trying to work, and you know, we were working 16, 18 hour days for, for an early stretch, or I guess about 16 hour days, 16, 18, and it, you know, it took its toll pretty quickly. And finally, we got it down to about 14 hour days. <laughs> That would do it. All right. Uh, what's the most valuable thing you learned on these deployments? What, like, just deployment in general or, like, skill set or? You know, I was uh, going to ask, like, the biggest accomplishment, but that's the next question. So uh, let's just go with that one for now. Which accomplishment? Yeah. On all those, I mean, what, what are you most proud of? Well, for Nigeria, is that all the work that we did, all the collaborations we had with WHO, um, MSF, the Nigerian Ministry of Health, and other CDC uh, collaborators, and you know the local health coworkers, we were able to stop the Ebola outbreak uh, in Nigeria before it took off. And if it would have hit Lagos at the rate that it hit, or any of Nigeria at the rate that it hit. Liberia, Sierra Leone, or Guinea, it would have been an absolute disaster. So I'm very proud that we were able to get it stopped there. Well, thank you for doing so. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big accomplishment. (laughs) You know, one of the valuable things I learned, two things, one work-related is, you know, just being very open to working with your partners and supporting them as needed and, you know, asking for help. I think that's the 
very big things um, there because you can't do it alone. So use all the resources you can. And then so personally, the big thing I learned, and this has gone to pretty much all my deployments, is you know, you'll find time to exercise because it really helps kind of break, you know, break some of that stress. And so I just started getting up a little earlier and going to the gym and working out. And I do CrossFit, so um, I need to do something anyway. I start getting cranky. But uh, Right, right, your condition. So it was really, really important to, to do that. And actually, most of our team started doing it after a while in Nigeria. So everyone was there, even before breakfast, kind of working out. So it was good. Right, right. Well, that's good. That's finding something that works for you. But I think that probably works for everyone. Um, do you have any downtime on these types of trips? I know for the emergency response, probably not so much, but. Uh, not really. I mean, not on the, not on the emergency response. On some of the other deployments, like the Kenyan ones, we had like one weekend off, like, or one weekend day off, like Sunday or something. Okay. And that was only after, like, the second week we were able to do that. Right. Yeah. You don't get much time off when you're in the field. You try to maximize all the time while you're there. Okay. And then just for the international (coughs) deployments, what were the living conditions like? Uh, for all the ones I've been on, the hotel has been very nice, very clean, very safe. Um, once you leave the hotel, it's a different situation. So, you know, the one in Nigeria is in a special, in Lagos is in a special location that had security, had a concrete wall with barbed wire at the top. Um, but it was hotel, I think, part of the intercontinental chain or related to that. So it's, you know, very nice right. hotels. Um, you know, and same with Nigeria. I mean, Kenya also had very nice hotels. And, you know, it's you know it's one of those things. It's not great to stay indefinitely because you don't have a kitchen. You, you know, you don't have any mm-hmm. creature comforts at home. Right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, for CDC, after each trip, do you have an agency debriefing? Um, summer reports. What what typically is uh, besides the good work you do in the field? What what is the fo- is are there follow ups or what? I know that's kind of broad for a bunch of deployments, but in general, uh, from yeah, for a lot of deployments, especially for like our our epi aid mechanism, there's always a trip report that you know these are domestic that goes back to the state health department for you know the big response thing related. Um, or, you know, trips, there's there's usually, you know, a debrief with your, you know, home center, like your home group, that kind of whoever deployed you, and then the COC always follows up with a uh, a debrief about how things went, you know, from the response side. So there's multiple levels of kind of checking in okay. and following up. Yeah, I, that's a generic question for so many for so many deployments. But the next one's not. What was the most valuable item in general you take with you on your deployment? And then what was the one thing that you always forget? I haven't forgotten anything yet. Um, I usually 